While I was writing that path and code, sometimes I'd get really irritated typing things out that take a long time. Let me show you an example. Let's make an array like this. So there's the array, and let's take an index that I want. To get that item out of the array, I'd have to type this. Okay. To me, that just felt like a lot of brackets, and if the names are longer than just three letters long, having to type it twice is kind of annoying. Anytime I wanted to add two vectors, it would look like this. I'd have to I'd have to add them point by point. So I'd say something like print, make a new tuple, end at 0, plus in 2 at 0, end at 1, plus in 2 at 1, like that. Oh, and it just ends up taking a long time to have to type things out like that. So this time I made a new class called vector in bug.py. So let's import that. From bug, import star. Now let's define a new vector. v1 equals vector end. I can supply it with either two integers or with a tuple or list. Now we'll make v2 equals vector end2. From there, I can simply call v1 plus v2, although this tells me I have a bug.vector object which is not as helpful as if I were to print it. And now it tells us that it successfully added those two vectors. This is because I overloaded the function add. That is to say, I provided my own definition, and that shadowed the definition which appeared by default. This is really useful because you can't directly do that to these objects and get what you want. See, if I try to add these two tuples, it concatenates them. If I try to subtract them, gives me an error because that operation isn't defined. But I am allowed to subtract my two vectors from one another because I've defined the subtraction method and I said that it gives me a new vector with the x and y values subtracted. I've also defined some other helpful functions. Let me just show you one or two more of them. If I want to take an element out of that 2D array, I can type v1 dot of my array. And that gets me the v1th element of my array. I thought that was a pretty nice way of doing it. I can also set it, v1.set my array to 2. So then for line in my array print line will show that this 1 1th element has been set to 2. See it in the middle there? 1, 2, 1. Great. Okay, let's continue. More tricks. Now what I've done is I've defined a class called direction and it inherits the methods from vector. Oh no, class and inheritance. It's scary. Well, it scared me at any rate. Maybe you already feel comfortable with it. So why don't you just laugh at me while I get this, uh, get this going here. I'm sure I'll make a mistake or two. So let's define a new direction. D equals direction zero. Print D. Now look at this. Direction doesn't have a print method. So when I go to print it, it actually uses the one from vector. So it's calling it a vector, see? Vector, string, self.x, self.y. But the direction itself has x's and y's, so it's OK. It's got an x and a y, and this, this works. So I can print d. I can also do things like print. I can do things like d.rotate right, which is a method not defined for vectors. Now D has been rotated, although the astute among you may have noticed that it's actually rotating left and I got the function name backwards, right? Because 0, comma, minus 1, that's pointed down. 1, comma, 0, that's pointed to the right. So rotating right from down is, is sort of a leftwise rotation. So, um, whoops. Too late now. If I tried to do rotate right on a vector, what would happen? There is no attribute because the direction class inherited the methods from vector. It's not the other way around. Okay, I hope that's clear. Now what are these things at the bottom, this at class method thing? That allows me to type direction 
the word direction, not an instance of the class, the class name itself, direction dot get v's. And that'll give me a list of these vectors. So I can ask it for a list of vectors by doing that. That's this static object here. I just felt like I wanted to include a list of all possible vectors that are considered allowed as directions. I wanted to include that in the direction class because I thought, okay, let's group this data together. So to get that data out, this is the way to do it. You make a definition of a method which returns an attribute of the class itself, class.vs. If I just tried to get the data out directly, uh, direction.vs, that can work too, but not from everywhere. Not, uh, that, won't, that won't always work if I'm inside another function. So uh, the correct way to do it is with one of these get methods. And you need an at class method um, word ahead of there in order for that to work. Okay, so we looked at the direction class and we looked at the vector class. And next, we'll look at the pathing class for bug. See you then.